morning. Um, I'm at work, actually. Um, I was in my office, but my safe is uh, messed up. So the safe man came at 1030. So I had to move out to the lobby. And uh, can you all hear me uh, good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, um, the lesson today, uh, as uh, Reverend uh, Dion Sanford said, it's about Lydia and the call to serve. Um, we all know that sometimes we um, tend to look down on certain people and um, about their uh, way of life or their living or whatever. And uh, this lesson teaches us that we that God uses uh, people according to His own purpose, not according to ours. And Lydia uh, was a one that helped Paul in his ministry, and um, doing her her serving as helping Paul, she uh, got saved, and her whole household. So God has a plan for everyone. And he can use anyone that he chooses to use. And this lesson will teach us three things. Uh, number one, it will teach us how Lydia uh, used her gifts and her social standings to support Paul's ministry. And it, you know, and that's one thing it will teach us how we can use what we have to support the ministry of God. Uh, also, number two, it'll teach us how to if we have if we are guilty of looking down on certain peoples and uh, because you know we feel in our own society that uh, they're not worthy of being used by God, then we can repent from that and uh, be used by God as I mean repent from that and uh, support them in their ministry. And the third thing is. Uh, we'll learn how not to boast so much about what we're doing for God, because we know that uh, without God, we are nothing. And it's all, the whole thing is about him and it's not about us. So these, these are three of some of the objectives that we will learn in the lessons today. Um, we have uh, four outlines in the lesson. We have, um, the first outline is um, the gospel encounters the Roman world, which we will talk about Paul and his traveling ministry with uh, Timothy and Barnabas. And the second outline would be uh, Lydia accepts Christ and opens her heart and home. And the third outline would be God calls ordinary people into his service. And the fourth outline is God's call excludes human boasting. So we're going to um, today uh, go through those four outlines. Um, time permitting, we'll go through those four outlines. And um, this is my first time, so I don't know how you all are doing it through the Zoom. If you uh, read the scriptures and then we study the outline or how we go about it uh hey there. but if we if we can't huh this is your day you have it your way <laughs> all right <laughs> okay then all right so we're gonna we're gonna go on and um if we can if we can get a reader or someone to uh read the outlines for me and then I'll come back and I'll discuss uh, each outline. Um, but first I'm gonna give um, a little introduction behind the uh, scriptures that, uh, that are here before us. Um, in the first part of the scriptures, it's, it speaks on Paul's journey um, when, uh, when he and Barab, Bar, I mean Barnabas went, uh, through uh, uh, went through the cities uh, searching for people to baptize and to uh, draw close to Christ. And after finishing their uh, visiting to the churches that they had already established, 
then Paul and, and Barnabas and Timothy decided to head north, but uh, for some reason they, they headed to Asia. And at the urge of Holy Spirit, they journeyed from Troas to the city of Philippi. Uh, Philippi was, it was about 10 miles uh, inland. So they landed at Neapolis and traveled over to Macedonia. And there Paul and Silas, uh, and it, it was there that they went to a river called searching for a place of prayer which a place of prayer was just a place where the people would gather to worship because we know that uh, in the synagogue was a place of worship, but this, was, this particular place was a, a place where the women would gather. And they, you know, the, it was no men, they were searching for 10 men that they can use, but no men were there. It was just a lot of women. So the women, you know, had gathered there. And so Lydia, she was one of those women that, uh, that were there. And she met with Paul and Silas at the river. And it was there she was converted. And we know that Lydia was one of the first converts of, of Philippi. And it, it, it said that she was named after the territory that, uh, that, she, uh, that was part of the area that she came from. She was, uh, she was in, in the purple trade, uh, purple dye trade, which was uh, a very expensive trade to be in because the purple dye was used for royalty. So Lydia was in, in that trade. She was not a poor woman. She was a very rich woman, but um, she was well known for her occupation but she was um, better known for her dedication in this story. She was better known for her dedication in the service of God. So we're going to go through that and uh, go through these scriptures. Like I said, if I could just get someone to read uh, the first outline scripture, then we'll go into the lesson and, uh, and the outlines. All right, I'll jump in and read it. Um, the King James Version of the first outline, 11 through 13, it says, Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of the of that part of Macedonia and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. <clears throat> Okay, um, on this outline, we thank you, uh, Reverend Sanford, for that. On this outline, it took two to five days for uh, Paul and his team to travel from Trolls to Macedonia. And the first, uh, the first colony they visited in Macedonia was Philippi. And on the second, Abbott, like I said, Paul and others traveled with him. They made their way to through the city gate and to the uh, water's edge because they was looking for the uh, place of prayer. They discovered that there was no synagogue in uh, Philippi, so there was no place for them to worship. And um, and then it, it indicated that there was what was not at least 10 Jewish men in that community because they didn't have a synagogue. So that was, you know, the 10 men was the number of men that Paul and them needed to have to hold a Sabbath service. So they didn't have the, the, uh, the 10 men that they needed. So that drove them to go down uh, by, the, by the river edge where the, the women were gathered there. And during this time, they, they gather to worship, but they're doing their laundry and, and they're talking and they, you know, they just 
get together like like we women's do. We we get together, you know, quilt circles and all that kind of stuff. So they got, you know, they was there for like female companionship. And so that's what Paul and his friend began to preach Christ to the women. And as they was preaching, Paul learned that the women who had converted to Christ had become a major source of, you know, for them to spread the gospel. Now, Lydia was there also, and um, she was there with the women's also. And so that, you know, that uh, go on into the second outline speaking about Lydia. But also I want to point out that the place of prayer is, is, is a, just a formal place. Any place can be a place of prayer. Your living room at your home can be a place of prayer. Anywhere that you gather to, to uh, fellowship one with another. Could be a place of prayer. So we, we can learn that with God's ministry, wherever you go, it, can, it gives you an opportunity to, uh, to do Christ. So Paul found, Paul found an opportunity, even though he couldn't do his ministry in the synagogue, he found an opportunity at the riverside to still do the ministry that God had called him to do. Any questions on the, on the first outline? Okay, on the second outline, um, it said Lydia accept Christ and opens her heart and home. And it's coming from Acts 16, chapter 14 through the 15th verse and the 40. And it says, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatra, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. And she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into and abide there. And she constrained us, and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they confronted them and departed okay this is this outline it speaks of Lydia being converted now Lydia's heart was already open to receive God's word so when Paul started to speak she listened and accepted Christ Lydia became the first convert in Europe and that, that is what she is mostly, you know, uh, remembered uh, uh, for. She was the first convert in Europe. And then after she accepted Christ and was baptized, she was blessed to see her whole entire family being baptized into the Christian committed, community. That itself right there is a blessing to to know that you have accepted Christ, you have accepted your calling into the ministry, and then you can see the effect that it have on your entire family, and that they can be uh, saved as well through your, you know, through what you have uh, encountered. And then um, when Paul and, and Silas got arrested, I mean, Lydia had so much joy after her conversion, that she invited Paul, you know, Paul and, and his companions to stay at her home. And um, Paul and then, you know, they used Lydia's house as like a camp for his mission, his ministry. And so that's where they would go and they would meet at Lydia's house to continue their ministry. And so Lydia, how Lydia's home became the first church at Philippi, she was a fearless woman and she opened up her home to Paul and Silas even after they had been released from prison. So she was fearless and so it didn't matter to her what 
what what she felt that they was going to do she was you know she was determined to do God's will so she didn't let her fear keep her from supporting God's ministry and she didn't let her fear keep her from doing uh, the will of God so we know that she was a widow and um and that she she just loved to be around single women and helping those that needed to be helped. So we we can learn from Lydia as far as being in the ministry as women. We know that that is a kind of like a touch and go subject as far as women being in the ministry and doing God's will. But we shouldn't let that stop us from doing what God has called us to do. We can learn from Lydia and, and use that, that, that fearless heart that she had and continue to do what God wants us to do, regardless of what people say, regardless of how people look at us, regardless of how people feel about women in the ministry, but just do what God has called us to do. Um, any questions on the second outline? Nobody. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, I, I kind of like, uh, you know, the connection between the first outline and the second outline, where I feel as though they started with prayer, right? And then Paul came with the message, and their minds and their hearts was open to receive the word of God. And I just feel like this shows the importance of prayer before we do anything for God. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. you're right. We we have to pray because we have, in, before we, it's just like, before you leave out of your house, you have to put on clothes because you don't want to go out without having on clothes. So before you go, start doing something for God, you want to put him first. You want to put on him first. So that way, when you do it, you want to pray to God and you want to allow him to use you in, in, in the ministry. So when you go out to do it, then God gets the glory. And when God gets the glory, then, then it's, it's, it's what he wanted from the beginning. So Paul will always pray. He will always greet people and in the name of Jesus. So whatever he did, he will always put God first. And, and then following this, uh, hold on, I'm going to pause for a second. Come on in, Dr. Judith. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to say one thing as well. We're talking about Paul. And as you had mentioned, Sister Teacher, earlier, that Paul had planned to go to Asia. Right. But a vision appeared to him uh -huh. and that was Christ speaking to him, telling him where he needed him to be at that time. And let's That's look right. at how obedient Paul was. So mm -hmm. the whole plan changed. And we as Christians, sometimes when we start out, if things don't work out the way we have it, that we plan, what do we normally do? We get discouraged. That's but right. Paul did not be discouraged. He was obedient to God's word. He went to Macedonia. And what happened? God always has a ram in the bush for, for, for you. That's so right. what I'm saying to us today, don't get discouraged. Sometimes we get discouraged with the number of people. You know, if we have a program or something, not many mm -hmm. people show up. Or even with Sunday right. school, we are here trying to, you know, learn the word. We, sometimes we get discouraged, but if we remember that God is in the midst of it, he will work it out. And so if you see that when Paul arrived to Macedonia, everything just fell in place That's right. and he will do the same for us. So do not get discouraged. You just keep the faith. Mm -hmm. That's right. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, and as you pointed out, yes, Paul were was supposed to go one way, but Holy Spirit, um, uh, fell upon him and, and uh, led him to go to another place. And once he got there and once he obeyed uh, Holy Spirit, and see, that's the key word is obeying God. You know, when you obey God, no matter what happens, you still gonna praise God for 
what was done because you obeyed him and he God had it in the plan altogether. So when he got there, he was able to minister and convert these women. And then he got a uh, evangelist out of the ministry, out of the ministry that he gave, because Lydia then became an evangelist for God as far as helping Paul in his ministry. So we know that once we obey God and do what God wants us to do, what he asks us to do, and like you say, not be discouraged, then God is going to work it all out. It doesn't matter, like you say, about the crowd. It doesn't matter about who likes you, who didn't like you, who didn't want to hear what you had to say. But as long as you was obedient and did what God asked you to do. And sometimes you can feel like no one is listening to you when you are you know, speaking on God's uh, behalf, but someone, someone is listening and you never know who you end up touching or who you end up um, bringing to Christ just by speaking and being obedient to God. And then, you know, there's a saying to say, what comes from the heart reaches the heart. Right. Lydia invited them to her house, a new right. convert. And I'm just interested, how many of you would have went to Lydia's house, a new right. convert at your church? And they say, oh, Sister Sarah, come over to my house. You, you never seen them before. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they have going on. You don't know how they set up ears, but they were willing to show love and say, oh, come on over to my house. You know, I, I probably would be, hold on, let, let me get to know you some, uh, because I don't know too much about you, but I feel there was a connection because of the spirit to where Paul was still willing to obey and follow the spirit because all the way up to this point, it was the spirit that got them, got them to where they are at this moment. So the spirit and obedience, great job, teacher and great job, Dr. Judith. Uh, obedience is very important now in, in our spiritual relationship with God. Right. Sister and then Sarah, like you say said, something? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. It it's uh, it uh, when you said how many of us would come over to a new convert's house. I think if we read in the scripture, she had to persuade them. Remember, she said, "If you believe mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I've accepted your word, right? Would you come on over?" So evidently, now this is not scripture. Once again, <laughs> this is me saying, evidently that must have been a little bit of reservation, uh -huh. but she did finally. Now look, if you believe that I accepted your message and I believe in God, just come on over to my house. Oh, yeah. And so I thought that was interesting in there as well. Oh, yeah. Right. But then, you know, the lesson, uh, points out of how we look at people too we are so we are so quick to be judgmental towards people so that you know by her being a new convert and her her occupation and everything so Paul would then probably was looking at this lady you know she she's a new convert and she's she she's she got money and everything, you know, and so she had to really plead her case to Paul now to get them to come over to her house. And we, we are people that we, you know, when people come to us, it's like uh, Reverend Sanford said, when they come to us, we be like hesitating, you know, like, I don't know you, you know, you might be, you know, serial killer or this and that. We hesitate. But in, instead of allowing Holy Spirit to lead us mm -hmm. to do what God wants us to do, we, we tend to lead ourselves. And that's what we mess up at, you know, trying to do it on our own and trying to judge people by what we see instead of allowing God to reveal things to us through the through Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Dr. Judith, come on in. Do you think, uh, do you think it was uncustomary at that time for women to play that particular role. You know, they when he went there, it, usually it took 10 men mm -hmm. to start a synagogue, you know, to start a church. And this is something that's just not usually, something that doesn't usually happen. In a lady's house, a woman taking this role and we going into her house. 
I just wanted to make that comment. And, and you're right. And remember, her house was the first church in that area. They used her house to start the first church. So because guess what? They couldn't find 10 men. So all they saw were women. You know, Paul at first looked for men. He searched for men so that they could have, you know, start the synagogue and to worship, but he couldn't find any. So they went down to the river and that's where they saw the women's at. So, you know, they had to preach to somebody. So they started preaching to them and the women's opened their hearts and started receiving them. And so that's how, you know, Lydia came in and um, became converted by listening to Paul. So now you have this woman that has been converted and has opened up her heart to want to do God's will. Her whole family gets converted. Now she's thinking, okay, I've done this. I've, I've accepted Christ into my life and my family has got converted. Now I want to do more. I want to do more for God. So I'm going to open up my home to these men and let them use this house as a whatever they want to use it for as long as they're using it for God. Now remember, she knew she knew nothing about Paul or or his his uh followers either. Just like Paul didn't know anything about her, but she was openly willing to invite these men into her home. Mm -hmm. Sister Sarah, yes, sir. Thank you. Remember. Uh, that uh, Paul and his uh, team wanted to go in another direction, but the Holy Spirit sent him there. Mm -hmm. We know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is all inclusive. So there was a reason why God sent him there. Right. Uh, I believe that in the first century um, Jewish thing that women didn't worship with the man That's and right. uh so with christ dying on the cross saying his gospel is all inclusive this was a way that paul can go in like I said like uh sister judah said it didn't find any man but paul was looking for someone in prayer and mm -hmm. here was the women mm -hmm. so that was his opportunity to share the gospel with them to make mm -hmm. them feel included now that's my take on it Anyone else? That's that's really good, Sister Jones. I agree with you on that. And it, and it shows us the move of God to where God is not coming. And sometimes he's going to call us to do some uncommon things that's for right. a specific time. So uh, we have to be alert to the spirit and aware of the spirit because we shouldn't be trying to do something common when God is trying to do something uncommon. And that's right. Anyone else? I think that's it. Come on, keep tearing well, down the wall this morning. All right, that was that was that was good on on that outline. I, I really did enjoy that that input on that outline. Um, the third outline it said God calls ordinary people into His service, and it's coming from First Corinthians, the first chapter, the twenty six through the twenty eight verse. It says, "For ye see your calling, brethren." how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. In this outline, I found that as we have seen in the in the former lessons that uh, Sunday school lessons about God calling uh, women into ministry, we learned that God does not hesitate 
to call people to spread uh, spread the word, even though society overlooks them. Lydia was rich, but most uh, Lydia was rich. And we know that most converts in that area, you know, converts were poor or they were, you know, working class people. But Paul, he tells uh, the converts that your formal education, your political power, your economy status, uh, none of that are not what push you ahead in the kingdom of God. Instead, God chooses those that the world counts as low to show the glory, which means that remember when Jesus chose the 12, he chose 12 social outcasts to be his disciples. Everybody, every one of them had a past, but he used them so that they can learn from him and be empowered with Holy Spirit. And then in turn, they were responsible for planning the message of the cross worldwide. So now we know that even outcasts, God can use them. And so that's that's what this, this is about. A lot of time we look at people um, finances or we look at people and we put them you know the people that are on pedestals and we look at okay these are the people that God wants to do but God wants people he uses people so that he can get the glory and not them you know the people that he used so when he brings them out and he puts them and start using them to uh spread his message then he uses them so that he can get the glory now remember Paul himself was a very, very bad person. But God, after he converted, you know, and saved him, he used him to be a powerful, powerful mouthpiece for him. So we, you know, instead of just looking down on people, and like I said earlier, when we, we tend to look at people on the outside, God looks at our heart. And so God calls those people to use them in service so that when they go out and they start ministering and they start doing what God wants them to do, then God gets the glory. And it's all about God. It's all about doing the work of God and letting God get the glory. Paul, a lot of times when he spoke, he would say, not I but God, but Christ. He will always let you know that it was not him, it was Christ. So that's the way we need to be when we go out and do the ministry of God. We need to let people know, this is not me. It, it, everything that I'm doing is for the glorification to God. It's, it's for God to get the glory. Anyone else? Come on, Dion. I know you have some. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good, doing good. And uh, I like where it said up in the commentary, it said, we are not worthy to serve because of what we have achieved in the world. But we are only worthy to serve because we have accepted God's call on our lives. And mm -hmm. You know, that reminds us of who we are. Uh, mm -hmm. There's this old saying that say, remember where you come from, because uh, it's nothing that we did nothing. that made us worthy, but it's all because of who God is and mm -hmm. us being obedient to the will and the call of God to spread the good news. And everybody is important. Uh, uh, it, it, no, it don't matter where you come from. Uh, it don't matter what your family background is, everybody is important. And, you know, even in the church, sometimes the church can have favorites. Right. But it's important for us to look to everybody with love and with importance because everybody can play a role if we include everybody. Exactly. And see, that I, I feel like that's a lot of problems that we have in, in churches today, 
where they tend to overlook people because of, like you say, they have favorites, they have picks, they have certain people that they want to be in charge of this and certain people that they want to do this and do that. But they tend to look over people and um, it puts me in the mind of uh, a story where this man went to this church one day and um, he was dressed and, you know, he was dressed like a homeless man. And when he got there to the church, they wouldn't let him in. They didn't want him to come into the church. And he uh, finally, he went in and he walked down to the front of the church and they politely asked him to, to get up, to go to the back and or either you know go back outside so uh by and by he finally you know got up and he went and got into the pulpit and he stood there and they were staring at him like why is this homeless man in our pulpit and, and you know to make a long story short he, he started putting off his clothes and he had a suit on up on it and he said i was i am the new pastor and I came to see what type of church that this was. And he said, now that I've saw, I don't want to pastor it because he don't want to be part of a church that can't accept people for who they are. And so we, we need to be careful of how we look down on certain people or how we shun away from other people and stuff because the Bible teaches us that to be aware of how we entertain uh, strangers because they may be angels in disguise. Mm -hmm. So we never know who God is using or who God sends to us with a blessing or who God sends to us with a message from him. You know, So we need to be careful as Christians to not so much as look down on certain people, but to accept people even as God has accepted us, because remember, we we weren't perfect either. And a lot of us, you know, tend to believe that, you know, tend to think that we were born saved, but we wasn't, you know, so we were, we're not perfect either. We all have sinned and, and come short of the glory of God. So we have to be careful of how we look at people because we never know who God is going to choose or who God is going to use. And sometimes the least person that we think is not that person, that's the main person that God has used to turn, you know, turn things around in our life. So, you know, that's my point on, on that um, particular outline that God calls who he wants to call into his service. And we, as, as uh, children of God, have to accept the ones that God calls into his service. Yeah, we know that God don't show favor to us. To, uh, right, right. God is a God that, look, look how he take your 12 disciples. They, they didn't know a whole lot about nothing. They just, God That's had right. to, to follow them. And he, they were. And they followed, after they started following him, they didn't, whole lot, they didn't know nothing. They done what God told them to do. That's they didn't right. know what it meant or nothing, but they, they were willing to follow him. That we have to be open heart and, and put self out the way for God to receive us. That way, loud of us. She put herself out the way. That means she becomes that means she become converted because when she goes she she received the word of God and she was ready, she was ready to work for him and do the work of him, even with with Paul. That means Paul loved her. Oh, they were connected. When you get to connect with the Holy Spirit, when you become formed, formed to the Holy Spirit, I mean, ain't no other, no other way to go but with God. Who had to leave self out of it? That's right. That's so right. Anyone else have any comment on that outline? Yes, yes, ma'am. I believe it was Mr. President and you yourself made mention about how we can have favorites in the church. And I believe mm -hmm. at this time, uh, this church that was uh, these new converts were having the same kind of conflict. Mm -hmm. Paul had to remind them, look, 
when the word of God came to you, none of you had any status much of anything, maybe a few. But mm. then some of us who feel like God has allowed us to amass a little bit of material wealth, we felt like, look, I'm privileged to be in this church. I'm privileged to the gospel. Right. But Paul will have us to know how God, and I hope I'm not getting in the last outline, have mm -hmm. us to know that our standing in this world has nothing to do with him offering uh, mm -hmm. the gospel to us. Uh, it, we can't buy it. And uh, it doesn't give us any more status than the uh, next person. And I just want to ask, have you ever been in a setting uh, when there was a speaker and the speaker comes up, be it man, woman, young man, a young uh, woman come up to speak and because they weren't dressed as the norm as we would do. We wondering if they have a message. There's something that we want to hear. And then when those persons begin to speak and the message comes out, I don't know about you, but I can confess that I was in a setting one time and the man who come up to speak and uh, that was before the Lord had, uh, Sister Joanne, had dealt with me <laughs> spiritually and trim. Uh -huh. See, I had too much uh, of the world influence upon me. Right. You know, I'm a work in progress. And mm -hmm. when this man spoke, he convicted me. And mm -hmm. I felt so bad mm -hmm. that I had to uh, repent before God. Paul was saying like this, look, um, it's not what you have. You know, he's going to talk about the simple things to confine, to confound the wise folks who thought they know stuff. And you mentioned that how God used ordinary people. And that's mm -hmm. because ordinary people recognize the fact, look, I don't have much to begin with, but if God has chosen me to do something, I'm going to give it my all. And that's so right. none of us have anything to brag about. And none of us uh, have anything to feel like we privileged to this gospel. And because people don't uh, have the social economics or live in the affluent neighborhoods, you know how you can, I have witnessed people talking about how they don't want certain people in their congregation. You know, I mean, right. you know, this is just awful. And right. I hope we're taking this to our uh, heart and right. asking God to break down these barriers that we have. Who do we think we are? Right. Uh, the right. gospel is to us all. And once again, I say none of our physical, our, our monetary standard or standards that we have that think that it gives us privilege to God, it doesn't. It right. does not at all, because none of this stuff that we have here on earth is going to matter in the world to come. As a matter of fact, we're just stewards over it anyway for a little right. while. Right. And we need to be careful how we are using it or how we are withholding it and how we're sharing it. It's right. important. The gospel is to all. And our physical standing in this world has no bearing and no inroads to God that makes us better than the next person. Exactly. And, um, and, and Paul pointed that out to them when he said that it doesn't matter, you know, if you're educated, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're rich or, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter because none of that matters when you, you know, when you, when that when you stand before God, none of that is going to matter. It's how you went about uh, doing the ministry of God. It's, it's the work that you do for God that matters. So while we, you know, showing favoritism because of what someone have or how they look, we need to be focusing more on the message that they uh, are, are given. And um, like you, Sister Jones, I once had to be convicted from that same thing. That's why I can, you know, speak on it as far as we need to just stop being that way because we never know who God has chose to carry his message. And when we shone away from them because of the way they dress or because of the, of the person that they are, then we're missing our blessing by not listening to them because we have been so judgmental towards, towards them and not accepting them for who they are. So then we have missed what God has sent them to deliver to us. And then once we miss it, you know, miss what God had for us, then we want to blame everybody else but ourselves. But 
Paul, you know, told us that none of that matters, even though Lydia had the money, but she used it as a, uh, to be, to minister. She used that to, as you know, for God, she used that to help in the ministry. So, you know, it's okay if you're going to use it for the purpose of God, but then when you go about, you know, and I'm, I'm going to stop there because I'm going over into the last outline. Um, but we have to understand that nothing we do, nothing we have, when we, we didn't do it ourselves. It's all about God. Uh, Sister, uh, Minister Joanne. Uh, I was sitting here thinking about all that we're, we've gone, we've been talking about, and it mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of, of myself is, you know, as far as virtual, that the status that we all having to go through now. Uh -huh. And it's kind of like, to me, uh, people are not taking advantage of the virtual, but they have cell phones, they have computers, they even having to teach their children virtual at home on right. some status you know so i'm i i am very happy to have learned or uh, caught on because i ain't learned everything on this thing yet because i'm picking at it as i go but mm -hmm. i am totally happy to be in sunday school virtually instead of just being knowing i got a phone and not taking advantage of it. so that's some of the things that we're not doing as a whole and and, uh, and and maybe are not spread abroad to our churches and to our Sunday school teachers and Sunday school's members. So, I mean, even just like uh, with Lydia, we're, women, we're out there. We just need to continue to be out there and teach our families, teach our homes and community what we need to be doing. Now, virtual is fantastic now that I know how to get in it. And I am just thankful that I am. And I am going to start working. I've been I've been getting into Sunday school on, on virtual. I just haven't been saying anything, but I am going to uh, kind of talk on some of my Sunday school teachers that our Sunday school teachers that hadn't been pulling in. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Anyone else before we go to the last outline? Okay. Uh, God's call excludes human boasting. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. When we look back on all that God has done for us and how he has brought me, brought us through everything as, as, as a one songwriter say, if I if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? We are nothing without Christ. We are nothing without God. And the true wisdom is knowing that bragging, if we're going to brag, if we're going to boast, we need to be bragging and boasting about God and what God has done. Not what we have done because we haven't done anything. There's nothing we can do without it. So we have to boast and we have to brag about what God has done through Jesus Christ. God chooses the lowly and completed the entire work of salvation by himself. Then he allowed us to be able to enjoy it through, through his son. So when he makes Christ, you know, Christ gave us the, the, the redemption of our sins. So boasting and bragging about what you have and what you do is, is, not, is not what God wants us to do. When we boast about spiritual things, we're boasting about uh, the wisdom, the righteousness, sanctification, and redemption that Christ have given to us. Now, remember that he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But because of his grace and his mercy, because of the love that he has for us, he has allowed Christ to come and uh, redeem us back to him. So the righteousness and sanctification, the wisdom and the redemption, 
is given to us as a gift. We didn't earn, you know, it's not ours. So the boasting is not to boast about what I've done, what I've accomplished, what, what I've brought to the, to the table. It's not about us. God does things for us so that he can get the glory. So when we're out spreading the, the gospel, when we're out spreading the word of God, he gives us a story to tell everybody on here. If you have been saved, if you have been converted, you have a story. You have a story to tell. And your story, when you tell your story, you are telling your story so that God can get the glory of what he's done for you. Not what you've done for yourself, but what God has done for you. So the, in this, Paul is letting us know that we were once as filthy rags, but God redeemed us. God brought us back through give, let, allowing his son to come and die for our sin. So now that he has done that and we have been saved and we have been sanctified and we have been converted, we can now tell the story of what he has done for us, what he has brought us through. And then he can get the glory for what he has done, but not ourselves, because we haven't done anything for ourselves. But all glory and all praises go to God. Anyone else? I'm quite sure we all got a story. You know, as we went through this lesson, mm -hmm. the course then kept coming to my mind, what can I give to enhance this ministry? And I think about myself years ago, there were so many times when I thought, well, I can't do anything. I, I, I can't give anything. I don't have anything to give. So often we look for big things that we can give or big things we can do in the church. And if, if they are not what we, as big as what we think they should be, then we don't do anything. But God has equipped all of us to give, to do something, to enhance his, his ministry. And we must remember that we got to use what God has given us. And just like, you know, with Moses, Moses was complaining to talk about what can he do? Or, I can't do this, Lord. I can't do this. And you remember when Moses, when he told him to, what do you have in your hand? Moses had a, a rod in his hand and he told him to stretch it, to stretch it out. What happened? Turn into a serpent and came right. out. So he was able to use that rod, which Moses thought it wasn't much that he could, you know, I just can't do it. But God has given us everything we need to do, to, to spread his word. Right. And we must remember that. Right. Exactly. We must remember that he gave us all that we need, and it's called the Bible. He gave us everything we need. He gave his word, and his word stands. And as long as we stand on the word of God, we have all the tools that we need to do his work. Lady Scott. Yeah, just trying to get your uh, letter get a chance to finish. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Taylor. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, uh, I I wanted to make a comment about what you said earlier about how when people and it's the same relating to what Dr. Judith said. When people come into the church, we don't we don't understand that God is using us all. It doesn't matter what we have on. It, it doesn't matter how we look. He, if you're willing to accept his word, which is filled with the Holy Spirit, he's ready to use you no matter who you are. And even as we talk about women, women and we go back to our lesson of last week and week before last, we talk about um, the women that God used. He, he uses the people that accept him. And right. a lot of women 
we're so patient and we're so humble that he sees the ministry in us. So he uses that just like in the beginning, how he made um, Eve from Adam. He knew that he was going to have to use some women, just like uh, in the genealogy when he used Tamar. Tamar wasn't what we thought she should be, but he used her anyway. Wow. You know, that those are the type of people God used. He mm -hmm. used who wants to abide by his word. Right. And right. we have to have that word in us in order for him to use us. And you are exactly right. It doesn't matter how we look. It That's doesn't right. matter the education that we have. None of that matters to God. Mm -hmm. What matters is that he can use us. That's right. Amen. And that you are willing to be used by him. Yeah. You open your heart and uh, want to be used by him. If you Absolutely. have that desire and spirit to be used by him, then he will use you to, to and like I said, in order for him to get the glory. Because yeah. he knows that you are willing and, obe and going to be obedient to do what he asks you to do. And in order for us to know that, just like you said, we have to study. We hear that word all the time, study to make yourself approved. You exactly. have to study the word in order not to judge who you think should look like you. That's, that, right. that's how you don't judge people, by studying the word. That's right. That's right. You are so right. Amen. Dane, Dane Gooseby, you all had <laughs> unmuted at one point. You all had something to say? We are God's legs and feet on this earth. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Amen. Anyone else? You know, there's a song in the church that say, I don't know <laughs> what's waiting on me. And then somewhere it says, but it's in my heart. It's in and my as heart. As long as it is in your heart, mm -hmm. God can do great things. That's great things. That's right. That's right. Anybody else? So I won't start singing that song, and Reverend Anderson has to bad me up singing that song this morning. <laughs> 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 right, do you have anything else Reverend Anderson no that's just about it I just pray and um, first of all I, I thank God for you all allowing me to uh, come into your homes today with this lesson and I pray that everyone will receive it and that we will be less judgmental towards people that are uh, coming before us to do the work of God and to accept the the message and uh, and not so much as look at the person that's giving the message, but accept the message that God is giving to us through them. And if we learn to do that, we will be better at uh, doing our work as uh, God's chosen people. And also that... Uh, if we see people who have a desire and wants to uh, do work, whether it's in the church or wherever, if they want to do God's work, we as Christians should be willing to, as you know, help them and reach out to them and draw them, you know, help to draw them closer. Lydia's heart was already open, and Paul, you know, Holy Spirit was there. And, and when Paul started ministering to her, she accepted it. So some people's hearts are already open, and we just need to just stop looking at the outer appearance and accept the heart of those people and start doing what God's work is in the ministry. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for teaching us this morning. Uh, great job. Awesome job. And Bless you. everyone, let's look down at the reactions and give us some hearts, some hand claps, uh, put some in the chat and let her know that she did a great and awesome job. And look, uh, I'm a person of opportunity. Uh, is there anyone that has not taught that would like to teach? 
always open. If you feel like you want to teach, and you have a willing heart to teach, and if you have not ever taught, let us know. Is there anyone here this morning? All right. All right, so I don't see anyone. So, uh, Sister Sarah, we will get ready to restart the list the second week in March. Uh, so we will get on that. And uh, I just want to give everybody the last update. Uh, we're asking for everybody to submit their registration for the CLS tomorrow at two o'clock. We will have people at the district. We will be there to receive the registration fee and the uh, course registration form. So please reach out to your people and encourage them to sign up for the school, which will be Intro to the Bible, Effective Bible Reading, Introduction to the Old Testament, uh, Creative Ways of Teaching, and uh, Public speaking, public speaking. All of those, the school will start on Monday night at six. So if you all have any questions, you all just let us know. Uh, but something else, next week, next Saturday, the mission is having their prayer breakfast. It is next Saturday morning. Uh, now, we could move this to another day or we could cancel this for next week, all right? We could move it to another day or cancel uh, next week. So like always, I'm gonna put up a poll and see what everybody's thinking. We'll go with the majority. All yeah. right, so let's see. Hey, I gotta go. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, you will. totally understand. Have a good day now. All right, you too. Okay, all right, I'm gonna launch the poll. The poll is up. Going to see what everybody says. You know, that way, uh, I'm going to move to the sky. Watch people about hit each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why didn't I take that over? They stood up there for the and nobody seemed to take that over. So they decided to leave. Now keep in mind, it was a red forest sign right there by the door. She come around and come trying to run out here and fill her. All right, so. You didn't have we're going three to... up there. Say it you again. Have now. You didn't have a three up there. You said cancel, move. You didn't say whether or not to keep it. Keep it. Well, you know, I, I don't want it to overlap. You know, we counseled it for the ministerial line, so I don't want it to. <laughs> I don't want it to go on and they they having prayer breakfast. That is an option. Since the moderator just said it, <laughs> that is an option if you want to keep it. But. Uh, 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 let's see. Well, moderator, you just well, hold on, y'all. Moderator, those are good it, choices you got. Those are <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, so what we'll do is the majority said move to another day. Uh, I really wouldn't want to put it on like a Friday. What about Sunday? Uh, Hold on, Sunday. Okay, hold on a second. Sunday.
Want to do a Sunday night, Sunday evening? You all unmute yourself and let's chat. Let's talk. Sunday evening about uh, six, seven. Is that okay? Sounds good to me. <laughs> all right, if y'all agree with next Sunday at six, click on the reactions at the bottom and give me a thumbs up. Sunday at what time? At six o'clock. Okay. All right, so let's move it to next Sunday, Sunday school, next Sunday night at six. And uh, we'll just keep it moving, keep it moving. This is a good problem to have when people want this to keep going on uh, because it could be the total opposite. You could be saying, look, we don't want this. Uh, let's, let's shut it down, but thank God for this and thank God for you all and your spirit to keep this moving. Uh, so, Sister Sarah, we're gonna have a busy day next week. So, put on your shoes and your and your uh, and your backpack. We're gonna have fun next Sunday. <laughs> yes, sir. We will. <laughs> all right. So, we're gonna close this, and it says we all have a part to play in God's grand scheme of redemption. Something as simple as opening. Uh, her home to the missionaries had a big impact on Christian ministry in its early stages. The newly converted Lydia, Lydia offered her home to Paul and Silas. She not only offered her home, but she also shared with them out of her abundance. Everyone has some contribution they can make in the furtherance of the gospel. We all have to make decisions about when and where we can best serve the cause of the kingdom. And the prayer for this morning is, Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us to be participants in the great work you are doing. We are grateful that you have called us to be co-workers together with your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, enable us to say yes to any and every need that advances your work in and for the world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. So we enjoyed everyone. You all have a great day, and we will see you next week. Amen. Thank you. You all the same. All right, thanks.